In this session, we're going to talk about RDS and the various components of RDS. This will be a three-part session, so we encourage you to take a look through each one and familiarize yourself with what is one of the key technologies MSPs use to bring their customers to Azure through the use of virtual desktops. Enjoy the sessions. Let's talk about what makes up the cost of running desktops uh, virtually in the cloud, right? So, you know, we already talked about the technical aspects of it. It's fairly complex and there's a lot of room for simplification and automation. And a lot of that is delivered on by Nerdia, right? So a lot of the value we add is from a technical perspective, making uh, RDS deployment and RDS management and RDS auto scaling simpler and quicker and, and more automated uh, than, than the alternative. Now, if we focus just on the cost, I broke the cost down into these four categories. So first category is the compute storage and bandwidth, right? So kind of the, the cloud resources needed to uh, provide the RDS control plane. And when I talk again about RDS control plane, these are all the infrastructure services, the license server, the connection broker, the gateway, the web, all of those pieces that are not the desktops themselves. They're usually a fraction of what the actual desktop resources are, right? Obviously, if, if you have a thousand users, then the compute storage and bandwidth for the control plane is gonna be a fraction of it. Whereas if you only have two users, then it may be the other way around. But I'm talking about a typical scenario where you have you know, lots of users, the control plane, is a kind of a fixed component um, that is required to, to authenticate and land user connections onto their appropriate desktop resource. So that's part number one. Part number two is the, the cloud uh, spend, the compute storage and bandwidth for the desktops themselves. So these are the RDS session hosts or the dedicated uh, VDI desktops that users may have if they're VDI users. So the, those two pieces are kind of you know, separate and it's good to, to look at them from a uh, separate uh, point of view. Although they're using you know, same hosting platform and maybe even the same operating system in most cases. Then the other piece is the licensing. And the licensing for, there's licensing for the control plane and then there's licensing for the desktops themselves. So let's look at all the various options on how you can license the RDS control plane. Uh, that can be done through software assurance where if a customer owns RDS CALS and is paying software assurance that's currently active on that subscription, they are entitled to take that subscription via a benefit Microsoft called license mobility and utilize those same licenses inside of Azure. So that's something they may already have or continue buying. Uh, it's becoming less and less common uh, for us to see that. So that's number one. Number two is buying RDS licenses via SPLA. Uh, and SPLA, as you guys know, is for service providers, stands for service provider licensing agreement. So this could be a hoster, somebody like, like a DAR that maybe has their own infrastructure. So they have an agreement with Microsoft where they can transact SPLA licenses and report them to Microsoft on, on a monthly basis. So somebody who's a, an existing SPLA partner can decide to use SPLA licensing, even though it's not running in their infrastructure, it's running in Azure, they will be responsible for um, notifying and paying for those licenses on consumption basis to Microsoft. And then the third option, which is brand new way of licensing software, uh, and that is called software subscriptions via CSP. So for those who are CSPs can buy either a one year or three year subscription to things like Windows, SQL, uh, Windows Server, I'm sorry, SQL, and now also RDS. I actually just realized it's been added as part of the price list. It looks like as of this month. So this is something new. So this means you can buy an RDS you know, client access license or subscriber access license, whatever you want to call it, kind of a per-user SKU for either one year or five uh, or three years. And 
of the three options, I, I think software subscriptions is the most cost effective. Supply is the most flexible because you're not committed for any long period of time. You're paying on, you know, on a month to month basis. Whereas with software subscription, your minimum commitment is a year, your, your, your maximum commitment is three, and obviously the cost is lower for the three-year commitment. Then the final piece that you need to think about when licensing a virtual desktop is how are you going to license the actual desktop resource, right? So the VM that's running Windows Server 2016 with desktop experience, or maybe even a Windows uh, 10 VM, which we'll talk about under Windows Virtual Desktop. So maybe for now, let's focus on Windows Server. So in order to actually use that as a desktop, you need to buy the server OS for that VM, right? Buying a RDS license lets you use the RDS capabilities, but it doesn't give you the right to necessarily use the software, the, the server operating system on the VMs that are running the desktops. And there are three ways that you can license Windows Server. We already covered this, but let's go through it again. You can buy a Windows Server on a, on a, on a per minute basis via rental through Azure. So by default, unless you enable Azure hybrid usage, you're gonna be paying that server OS subscription fee to Microsoft as part of Azure. The, the more you scale out, the bigger the server is in terms of number of cores, the less cost, cost effective that is because you're paying kind of proportionally larger um, uh, you know, fees for the server OS. So that's one way to do it very easy. You don't have to buy anything separate. You just spin up a VM that has Windows on it. You do not enable Azure hybrid usage. And now you're paying for that license along with the compute. Option number two is using software assurance. Uh, this is, I'm um, trying to think, I, I'm actually be wrong about, no, that's, I'm not wrong about that. You, you can use a uh, Windows Server operating system with the CALs using software assurance. That's kind of the traditional use case for Azure hybrid usage benefit. So you enable hybrid usage, and as long as you have an active software subscription with the right server OS and the necessary CALs, because this is individual per user usage of that server, you're covered. And then the third option is again, using this new software subscriptions through CSP functionality, where you can rent or you can, you can subscribe to either one year or three year server operating system um, under software subscriptions. And that is the most cost effective of those three options. If those VMs are gonna be running, you know, full time pretty much, or, you know, most of the time in the month. If you're only, you know, on an extreme, if you're only running a VM for an hour every month, then obviously you're better off renting that license for just an hour via, via Azure, and you're not going to buy that license and then cover it with SA, and you're certainly not going to buy a one or three year subscription to it. So in some weird cases, it may make sense to rent it from Azure, but purely from a cost perspective, when you are using the VM for, for a you know, significant portion of the month, you're better off licensing it through software subscriptions.